Swamp Petey Gray is here. So, it's been a rough couple of weeks, rough month for me. Haven't been able to get many videos up, and the rest of the year is not looking much better. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to, right now, here and now, I am basically going to uh, do my top 5 to 10-ish knives uh, that I acquired this year. So, let's jump right in. Uh, these are all going to be in no particular order. And in fact, this one, I wouldn't even say is one of my favorites. This is just the latest knife I acquired. So we're going to squeeze this one in here too. This little uh, Boker USA boys knife, jack knife, whatever you want to call it. About a three inch little, uh, yeah, basically, basically a boys knife. Got the, the small bolsters, jigged bone. The large... Uh, tree shield brass liners nice little knife first up we've got z pen blade nothing fancy just a good old uh useful pen blade then we've got this is main event so this is one of their from their tree brand series i assume this dates from like the 60s maybe the 70s or something like that uh it would have had a blade etch which is long gone it's got the boker usa stamp here it's nice long pull french pull whatever you people like to call it whatever you knife nerds like we've got the the swedge going on just on one side very nice we've got the back of the blade blade is very intact despite being heavily used got nice pitting uh, a great looking blade uh, i like this knife a lot it's nice and tight this is one i'm going to enjoy carrying uh here we've got the model number 9695 with the arbolito stamp in the middle so super cool very simple little knife like i said is this this was like a knife made for you know a young a young man to carry or, or a young lady to carry and uh but certainly useful for adults too uh what do we want to look at next next let's look at this first up for my knives of the year we're skipping knife of the week we're going right to knife of the year so contestant number one and we're going to make it a vote you guys are going to be going to pick the knife of the year from my selection which you'll see uh we've got this lovely little kissing crane gentleman's knife and uh this is one of my favorites i carry this bad boy all the time absolutely love it it's got this lovely uh you know, sheep's horn or whatever kind of horn buffalo horn i don't know horn scales great scales nickel silver pins it's got this awesome back nail file that's kind of designed to close the edge like they used to do with the punches on the officer's knives very cool great action I've got the little four turn corkscrew fluted it's got nickel silver liners and a spacer and then we've got the fancy little pair of scissors these got this slight curve to them, which I really like, actually. They're really nice scissors. Uh, they got the rust-free stainless stamp. I don't think this is particularly old. I think this could be from, like, the 80s or something like that. Uh, let's see. Here's the pen blade. If I can get it out. This doesn't get any easier. Yeah, we've got the pen blade with the R. I would guess this is no earlier than the 70s. Yeah. But just such a cool knife. This is one of my favorites I carry all the time. Cross free with the kissing cranes. Robert Class Solingen. Very cool little knife. Is it one of the best knives of the year? I don't know. That's up to you. So next up, what do I want to look at next? All right, let's look at an officer's knife from Germany. This is Deep Res. This is one of my top 10 knives for sure i just love the, this knife it's got excellent snap really heavy pull it's just like like a beefed up version of the swiss knives from this period it's also got this neat river bam that has a uh 
German patent number for having this elongated hole in it. It's a unique shape. It's like scooped out on one side. Very interesting reamer. Uh, punch, whatever you want to call it. Brass liners. Oh, can I get it open? There we go. Got the four-turn fluted corkscrew. Yeah, everything on this has heavy pull and heavy snap. And we've got the can opener. Lovely. Got the big old cap lifter screwdriver. The prerequisite must have for any multi tool, and it's even got a beer barrel stamped in it. Super cool. And no, that's not a beehive, it's a beer barrel. Uh, it looks like something Winnie the Pooh would carry around, but that's what beer barrels used to look like, apparently. Um, next up, we've got the small clip blade on the back. Notice this clip blade has the stamp Magnetica which uh, somebody explained to me. That was like, uh, I think Magnetica was the uh, Philadelphia company that was importing these knives from Germany back in the day. Uh, I think Hobie was the one that pointed that out to me. And last but not least, we've got the big old D. Perez Zollingen blade that's almost a Warren Cliff, almost. I mean, it clearly wasn't a Warren Cliff to begin with, but somebody straightened this belly. They were like, ah, belly on a blade. We don't want that. We just want a straight line. And uh, yeah, so we got that. But still, this is a great knife. I did have to repair one of these corners. Yeah, this corner here, I had to fill in with epoxy because this whole chunk was missing. But it matches pretty good. This is still shrinking. So yeah, she's in rough shape, but man, I love this knife. This is certainly from the 19 teens, you know, um, very cool. De Perez, uh, camp knife. Next up, what do we want to do next? I'm trying to keep these in some kind of order because otherwise I won't remember which ones I actually picked and which ones were just sitting on my desk already. Next up, we're going with the Master Craftsman Small. This is probably my most carry knife i love this knife it's one that it was like uh it was my white whale for a while i couldn't find one i almost got one and it had a broken file and i couldn't get that fixed and there was a whole whole story but eventually uh uh my friend kirk took mercy upon me <laughs> and helped me uh to acquire this one and for that i'm very thankful kirk and uh but yes, this is absolutely one of my favorites it's uh, late seven, later 70s, I believe. So we've got a stainless steel shield, but it does have the aluminum tweezers. I don't know if they can. I think they came with it. Yeah, either way, it would have had them for certainly to begin with. Um, then we've got the Square Phillips. Does not have a can key, but it does not have a file either. It's that transitional period, like uh, 74 to 75, I guess. And maybe a little earlier than that. Not quite the late 70s. Um, we've got that reamer. Gotta have a reamer. Gotta have a reamer. Let's keep it moving because it's got a lot of stuff in it. We've got the cap lift screwdriver with the sharpened edge for cable ripping. We've got the can opener. No plus pat. 2D Phillips. Bam. Um, next up, we've got the, uh, the file, which is exceedingly rare to find on an 84 millimeter model such as this. And did I mention, yeah, it's a small, so it's an 84 millimeter mile model. It's actually a 236 K FMAU, I think. Yeah. Something like that, but super cool knife. Next up, we've got the wood saw. And this is the later one with the straight teeth and the brushed finish. Then we've got the ever popular and longed after 84 millimeter scissors. A small clip blade. Love that little clip blade. Bam. And last but not least, the main event. This one's got Hoffritz, Switzerland, stainless. Wow, Hoffritz, really? You made this in Switzerland? No, it's Victoria Knox. Victoria Officier Swiss with, with the famous William Tell's umbrella, keeping Victoria, the Queen of England, dry. That's the mythology that I'm pushing now. 
That's why they did this. The umbrella keeps Queen Victoria dry. And if none of that makes any sense to you, it's because you've got half a brain at least. Um, here we go. Next is, is the Sears and Roebuck, uh, although made by Camillus, five blade cattle knife circa 1934 or something. I think it was, I got this. I got this from the original owner. He was given it to him by his father, uh, yeah, it, it's a crazy story. It's just crazy. It, like, this was on a cattle drive and everything. Like, it's probably one of the last, like, actual commercial cattle drives. Very cool little piece of history this guy is. Um, first up, we've got a reamer. Not just a reamer, a spiral punch. Uh, maybe somebody can tell me what is with the spiral punch. I believe it's a style thing. I guess there's a difference. I, I don't know what it's, why it's for. Maybe it is for screwing, reaming holes out. I don't know. Maybe you can tell me. Um, but either way, I love that spiral punch. Next up, we've got the spay blade, and this thing has done its its job for sure. For sure, this is spayed some animals, so very cool. So, you know, and then you just wipe it clean, and then you go and eat your dinner with it later in the same day. <laughs> You're just uh, living on the, life on the range. Next up, we've got... A pen blade, because, you know, you might have to write a letter home to your ma on the cattle drive. So you got a little pen blade, sharpen your quill. Nothing wrong with that. Next up, we've got this big honky clip blade. I love this blade. I don't know what the thought was here, I guess, for whittling or something. But, man, it's super cool. Usually these cattle knives are two layers with three blades. Uh, I, you don't see a lot of these five-blade cattle knives, at least not in my experience which is limited, admittedly. Um, we've got, fun, last but not least, the High Carbon Steel USA Blade, which, as we all know, is made by Camillus for Sears Roebuck Company. Super cool, nickel silver shield, the blind bowl series. I mean, I love how the, the, the amber, this amber bone has faded. That's just fantastic. What a great little knife. Great story. Great piece of history. Um, next up. Now, this is one I'm sure everybody expected to see. And why not? Because it's my uh, my Boker uh, Campmaster. Love this knife. Love it. And I've got a couple of these now, but I can't, I can't do them both. I, I thought about, I tried to put both of them in. And then I was like, you know what? I'll just stick to the, stick to the older one. So I believe this was made sometime in the 1920s. Uh, possibly a little earlier i don't think so uh could have been in the 30s who knows um very dark dark edges on this thing dark uh plastic scales just black as the night that you can see they've shrunk and cracked which is very common with this old plastic and this one somebody had monkeyed with this one because it was actually held together with a nail so i kind of had to fix it but uh yeah very cool let's check out this corkscrew a lovely little four turn corkscrew with a I think it's an aluminum liner. It's interesting. Aluminum spacer in the center with brass on the outsides. I yeah, I don't know. Don't know what to tell you. Uh then we've got this lovely reamer. Bam. And this has a very unique shape to it, too. It's like half round. Most of them are like a quarter round. Like, uh, let me see, like this guy right here. So you see they actually have a 90 degree corner on one side. This one does not. This one has like, is rounded all the way over. Uh, yeah, just a, just a unique uh, reamer design on this Boker Campmesser. Next up, we've got... Excellent snap on the can opener. Very thick, heavy-duty can opener with the little tree stamp. Love it. This is all carbon steel tools. We've got a small cap lifter screwdriver. And it's, it's an odd-looking one, but it actually works very well. I use, I've used it to open quite a few beverages. Works fine. Just, uh, I wasn't convinced at first. I had to try it a couple times. So I was like, okay, it works. But it just looks like it wouldn't have enough grab, but it does. And you can see the uh, little tree is uh almost fading away but you can still get just a hint of it there next up we've got Z clip blade with the little tree on the back and the h boker and co soldier 
Germany stamp on the front. That is a stamp that they used going right back to the beginning in 1869. So uh, it's not very helpful for dating because they used it from like 1869 to 1945. So it's kind of like, uh, it, oh, it's, so it could be anywhere within that 70 year span. Um, yeah, H. Boker and Co. Sologen. That's their original stamp though. So very cool with this tree, the Arbolito, symbol of the chestnut tree out in front of their family's first shop. Next up, we've got a Remington Junior Scout. This is another one of my favorites that I actually carry a lot. Love this guy. Um, it's got the nickel silver liners, carbon steel, great shape with the jigged bone handles. The emblem is wonky. I think it fell out. Somebody glued it back in. Not quite straight, but it's, it's okay. I, I can deal with it. Um, we've got the can opener with the Remington stamp on the back. I think this one dates to like uh, 1924 to 28 or something like that. But yeah, we've got the Remington with the patent number on this two-piece can opener. Very cool design. Uh, next up, we've got the long uh, screwdriver cap lifter. Very cool. Then we've got a nice bail. Everything on this thing. This is just such a cool knife. I don't know, let's say it over and over again. I, this is one of my favorites. I I haven't been, I kind of put it away and I'm just kind of like being amazed with it now because I haven't actually set eyes on it in a few weeks. Um, we've got this Reamer with the Remington stamp. Remington. Yeah. So, I don't know. Maybe this is later. Maybe this might be from the 30s. I forget. Haven't looked at this in a while. But yeah, we've got this sweet Reamer. And. Last but not least is the main blade with the long pull, that long swedge, the Remington UMC stamp. Okay, yeah, it does say made in USA. So I think this is a later later one, like after 1928. But yeah, we can see the RS 4233 stamp on the back. Just such a great knife. One of my absolute favorites. And then... We've got, we're down to the last three. So, first up is this 1957 to 1960 Artisan. Very cool. This is one I had to rebuild heavily. The, the liners were all rotted out of it. The aluminum liners were completely shot. But we've got still got the original... Uh, nickel silver tipped tweezers. These aren't aluminum, they're nickel silver. You can tell because they're kind of got that gold hue to them. Uh, got the original plastic tweezers. Not that that's a big deal, but it's cool, still cool to have. Um, on the back, we've got the square Phillips with the nail file. Super cool. That's the uh, best one to have right there. If you can get it, get that one. And uh, then we got that all because it's an all. Yeah, nice little all. I love this is my favorite. Like I just like how it looks on there. And I made what I I prefer the corkscrew for uh functionality, but I do like how the the uh uh the Phillips just tucks in nice and neatly and sits flat. When it's got a corkscrew, it kind of sits up like this and the two layers will fall over and stuff. So I, I do like this for aesthetics, but I prefer the corkscrew if I'm like gonna be like outdoors actually doing stuff. Um Next up, we've got the cap lifter with the sharpened edge, with the screwdriver, all that blah, 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 yaggity schmackity stuff. We've got the plus pack can opener, which, of course, we would because it's, you know, 1957 or so knife. Um, next up, we've got the polished wood saw. So before the mid-60s, up until about 1965, the saws had angled teeth and a polished face. And then... Uh, Maybe this one will do it. Yeah, that one won't do it. Uh, not that one. And then after 1965, the saw switched to the brushed surface with the straight teeth. And there's also less teeth. So they're, they're, they're a little coarser, you could say. But still, that's, so that's, the, uh, that's the perfect Victorinox saw to have if you've got, a, got the choice. Then we've got the 84 millimeter scissors. Beautiful. 
And then last layer, we've got the little clip blade coming in hot. Love these little clip blades. So that's why I, you know, I've even taken a few modern pen blades and turned them into clip blades on knives I really wanted to carry because I just like the look of it. Um, and then finally, we've got heavily worn, but still quite quite intact, uh, if that's a contrary statement there, uh, main blade with the four-line Victorinox Switzerland stainless rust-free tank stamp on the front, Victoria Officier Swiss on the back. Super cool. Super, super cool. Bam. But great little knife. Now, that's the artisan. So we might as well just go right ahead into the Craftsman, which is like uh, its cousin. Basically, it's that same knife with a uh, bail on it. Uh, although these are pretty rare. I don't even think they have a page on the sack wiki. Maybe they do, and I'm just uh, I'm just missing something. But uh, this is, is a funny one because this actually didn't start life as this. This started life as a Master Craftsman Small. That was sent to Monroe, Connecticut, and then sent to Ebox, Switzerland, and then they called me and said, hey, we can't fix this. Do you mind? Can we just turn it into a four-layer? And I was like, yeah, sure, fine. And that's what they did. So they turned it into a four-layer and took the uh, broken uh, metal file out of it. So at first, I was kind of upset, but then I realized I wound up with a pretty unique knife, this being a factory craftsman from, you know, that rolled off the floor in 20... 22 so that's pretty cool you know uh you know if you, if you look at it in the in the most obs obtuse way possible but nonetheless it's got the original aluminum tip tweezers the original plastic corkscrew because this knife was in fantastic shape except for the file was broken off it's like nobody ever used it and then one day they took the file off and just snapped it off that, that's how it looked uh, first layer is that. Bam. Again, we've got the square Phillips with the uh, fingernail file. Then we've got that rimmer. Bam. Yeah, this one dates to, I believe, the early 1960s uh, when it was originally made and then it was refurbished uh, this year. And we've got the cap lifter screwdriver with... This sharpened edge again. All the same stuff going on. And then we've got the plus pat can opener with the 2D Phillips. Look how like uh clear like there's no wear on it and it's not scratched up at all. This is all like this thing is just in, in original shape except for having a, a layer broken. Like it, it blows my mind that that layer was broken. Next up we've got and notice it's also got the opposite layer. The other one, the saw came after the artisan. I just showed you the saw came after the opening layer. Now the scissors come after the opening layer. Um, with a fresh spring for the those scissors. Next up is the wood saw, which this is a polished wood saw that they ground at the. I don't know what they did. They shouldn't have touched it, but they like ground it. I don't know why they did that. Kind of annoying. Uh, still very cool knife though. And then we've got the wee little clip blade. We've got that wee little speaker in the background beeping, driving me absolutely insane because it's been off for two hours and why is it going to beep now in the middle of a video? Ugh, I hate stuff so much. I just hate everything. Now I forget where I was. So I'm going to have to start over from the beginning. So, all right. So first up, we've got this little guy that I just got. So this is a little boker. I'm kidding. We're not going to start at the beginning again. Um, last but not least is a recent acquisition, but this is one of my favorite finds of the year. Probably my favorite find of the year is this Anton Vingen. Super cool knife. This, uh, <sighs> what is it called? Yogg's Messer, a Yogg's Messer, a hunter's knife. Very cool. Lockback knife. It's got this awesome, enormous five turn corkscrew. You are, that's, you're, you're, you're open for business when you open that, when you open that up. You know what I mean? Got brass liners. Lovely. 
heavily worn some kind of chemical like a corrosive maybe even soda something a cleaning out something got spilled on this thing and ate chunks out of it but it worked out very well and it didn't damage anything it just gave it a cool look it's got these lovely matched set of stag like i'm pretty sure these came like so see how this is smooth here and that's how like a like a real horn is if you actually had just like shot a deer so uh i think these actually came from like the same section and you know of the horn that was interesting normally they would just be like randomly grabbed out of a bin of slabs you know uh very cool got this heavy duty nickel silver bolsters on the end everything is tight and right lines up great i mean it's just such a beautiful knife first up we've got uh, let's do this here we go uh -oh, i busted my fingernail today We've got a pen blade, a large pen blade. I mean, that's this pen blade is, I mean, let's compare it to the main blade on an 84 millimeter, just to give you some sense of how large that pen blade is. It's almost the size of an 84 millimeter main blade. This knife is not playing around. Next up, we've got this awesome wood saw, double cut, cross cut wood saw. Uh, I have no doubt, I haven't had a chance to test it out, but I have no doubt this thing will rip. Uh, it's also got a very clear uh, taper from the edge to the spine, which is exactly what you want to see on a saw that's actually designed to do something other than look cool. Finally, last but not least, we've got the main event, the main blade. What's so special about this blade? Well, it locks for one thing, which is super interesting. Um, and yes, this little humpback here, that is the lock for the lock back. And uh, here we can see more of that chemical stain, whatever happened. You know, it's all on the back of here. It's all over here. Basically lines up with this saw. All those stains all line up. So something definitely got spilled and left on it. But let's look if we can see the stamp. Anton Wingen. Junior, soldier in Germany, on the back. You can only see half of his face, no matter what I do, because that's just the way it's designed. Othello, so it's like a meant to look like a Greek statue, I guess, or something like that. But uh, yeah, Anton Wingen Jr., uh, if you Google their name, what you will mostly find is that they were famous for making uh, knives for Hitler Youth. So, but I mean, hardly, so, it, like, uh, you know, it's it, it's not like uh, it's a surprise to find that uh, a company that was around during the World Wars would support the company they're from. So uh, that's not like saying something dramatic. It's just the what what happened then. So if you Google this Othello stamp, and this company's still in business today, and they still use now they just use the Othello brand. The Wingen brand is gone, but you can look up Othello cutlery. They make kitchen cutlery and kitchen ut utility stuff. So, as many old knife makers do, uh, they have updated the uh, stamp a little bit. But, so, there we go. We've got the Anton Wingen. We've got the Custom Craftsman. We've got the Master Craftsman Small. We've got the Artisan. All those 84 millimeters. We've got the Kissing Crane. We've got this little boy's knife, even though it doesn't stand a chance... We've got, oh, we've got the deep Perez. Oh, no. Oh, we've got, oh, we've got the five-league cattle knife. Oh, wow. Oh, no, we've got the Boker Camp Messer. Oh, no, we've got a Remington Junior Scout, Girl Scout, whatever you want to call it. Oh, so, yeah, I don't know. Vote and tell me what's the knife of the year. And if you want to pick one of the knives I didn't show, that's cool, too. Um, anyway, so I will wish you all a wonderful holiday season however you choose to celebrate it and uh i i will see you guys in 2023 take care pd grace out